Good morning once again, everyone. May I ask you to please take your seats. The ceremony will commence shortly. Thank you. Good morning, Victoria. Welcome to the official Australia Day flag raising ceremony for 2023. My name is Jacinta Parsons, and I'm delighted to be here as your master of ceremonies. Before we commence official proceedings, please join me in welcoming members of the Australian Defence Force, accompanied by the Australian Army Band, as they march into position for the Australia Day flag raising ceremony. Royal Guard of Honour for today's ceremony is led by Major Leanne Richford. The Tri-Service Guard is comprised of Navy, Army and Air Force personnel from HMAS Cerberus and the Defence Force School of Signals.
There's no doubt that 2022 was another challenging year, but it was a year not defined by these challenges, but rather by how we as a community responded. Our acts of compassion toward one another, the resilience we showed as we adapted to new ways of living and working, and the sacrifices we all made to protect those we love. No one has sacrificed more than our frontline workers, those who have been working tirelessly to keep us safe. Many of you are attending here this morning, and I want to acknowledge and thank you all for your continuing efforts. I want to pay particular mention to guests here today who've been instrumental in the response to the Victorian floods beginning in October 2022. Those who have been affected by the emergency and those that continue to work on relief and recovery efforts right across the state. Good morning also to everyone tuning in from home and thank you for joining us for this flag raising ceremony to mark the official opening of Australia Day in Victoria. On Australia Day 2023, let's take the opportunity to reflect on the unique Australian spirit that has shone through the challenges and that continues to bring us hope as we look ahead to a new year. Those who are able to, please be upstanding as we welcome the official party. Air Commodore David Strong, Royal Australian Air Force. Commodore Greg York, Royal Australian Navy. Major General Andrew Bottrell, Australian Defence Force. The Honourable Jacinta Allen, Acting Premier of Victoria. And Her Excellency, the Honourable Linda Dassault, Governor of Victoria, and Mr. Anthony Howard. Major Leanne Richford will now report to Her Excellency the Governor to invite her to inspect the Tri-Service Royal Guard and the Australian Army Band. Guests, please be seated.
Her Excellency, the Governor, is being escorted back to her seat. The Guard Commander will now seek permission to carry on and will salute the Governor. Welcome to our official party and distinguished guests. I'd like to commence official proceedings today by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which we are meeting. I pay my respects to their elders past and present and the Aboriginal elders of other communities who may be here today. Now for the 2023 Australia Day Address. Please welcome Her Excellency, the Honourable Linda Dassault, Governor of Victoria. Thank you. May I start with some acknowledgements. I want to acknowledge the Honourable Jacinta Allen, Acting Premier of Victoria, the Honourable David Davis, representing the Leader of the Opposition, Shane Patton, Chief Commissioner of Victoria Police, Major General Andrew Bottrell, uh, Commodore Greg York, and Air Commodore David Strong, Senior Victorian Officers of the Australian Defence Force. Ziad Itani, Dean of the Consular Corps and members of the Consular Corps, and every single one of you, our distinguished guests gathered here today. Can I also acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which we're gathering, the Wurundjeri and the Boonarong people of the Kulin Nation, and pay my respects to elders past and present and to elders too of other communities who may be with us. I want to just uh, let you know that the wonderful Auntie Joy Wandon Murphy was due to be with us this morning and unfortunately last minute has not been able to attend, but she's been a wonderful presence of these events uh, and many others for many years and so we all hope that all is well with her. Well, I've had the privilege to address the Victorian people now across eight Australia Days and continue to tradition, the, the, sorry, the tradition of welcoming diverse groups here at Government House on and around this occasion too. I look back at what I said across those years. I've reflected on sadnesses that we as a community have experienced, the pandemic, bushfires, and of course this year, the recent floods are absolutely front of mind. Of course, I've also reflected on so much to celebrate in our nation's freedoms and our state's very many successes. And the gratitude too that we all share for the kindness and the care shown by so many in those darker times and indeed every single day. Gratitude lies at the heart of so much of what we reflect on when we gather upon an important civic occasion. Gratitude to the First Peoples who've cared for this land for so long. Gratitude to those who created and those who fought to protect our democratic framework. And gratitude to those who've joined us as Australians and made us so much the richer for their presence. What in combination Noel Pearson has described as our ancient heritage, our British inheritance, and our multicultural triumph. This year, I want to add a little to reflections that I've made in the past. It's impossible to be unaware of the community debate about when best to celebrate our National Day. And of course, 
I know that opinions on the topic vary. For First Peoples, there is much hurt and pain around this date, given the import of the historical events of 26 January 1788 and beyond. For the majority of Australians, 26 January is the only date they've ever known as the day on which we gather as a nation. Many have family and community traditions around this date decades long. Some support a change of date, others do not. And each group holds their opinions dearly. It is therefore a difficult topic. But if we're truly a mature, strong and clever nation, and that claim is not just jingoistic rhetoric, then we must be capable of dealing with the difficult topics upon which our opinions differ. This one and others. It takes insight, effort and goodwill. It takes effort to listen to each other. It takes insight and goodwill to acknowledge that decent people can hold different views, that they can hold their views strongly without one being immutably right and the other wrong, or one good and the other evil. The need to listen to opposing views is not peculiar to this country, this decade, or this topic. At a speech at the University of Arizona in 2011, President Barack Obama entreated that when we address issues upon which we differ, we need to talk with each other in a way that heals rather than in a way that wounds. Closer to home, in 1982, speaking at a farewell dinner for Governor General the Right Honourable Sir Zelman Cowan, Prime Minister the Right Honourable Malcolm Fraser congratulated His Excellency on his ability to help people of different ideologies or opinions realise that they have, in the end, one great cause and that is Australia. As there's debate around Australia Day, let's not fall prey to the irony that the respect, harmony and diversity that we seek to celebrate on our National Day become the very things undermined by disrespectful argument about the date. And let's commit, as we gather today, to discuss this and other topics upon which we might differ as a community in a way that heals rather than in a way that wounds. The continuing success of our nation depends on a balanced recognition of those who've cared for it for millennia, of those who built and have protected the modern nation, and of all those who've joined us and continue to join us, adding their culture, their skills and their contributions. It depends not on us agreeing on every topic, but on the capacity to discuss and consider differing points of view. It depends on all of us remembering that in the end, we share one great cause, and that's Australia. And that's something we can all celebrate together. Thank you. On behalf of the people of Victoria, thank you, Your Excellency. I would now like to invite the Honourable Jacinta Allen, Acting Premier of Victoria, to speak and lead the reading of the affirmation. Good morning. I would also like to start this morning by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which we are meeting on and pay my deep respects to Elders past and present. And in doing so, I also do acknowledge that while today is a day that many celebrate the best of our great nation and all it can be, it also does represent a day of mourning and reflection for many Victorians and is a challenging time for our First Peoples. And it is rightly respectful to acknowledge that views on Australia Day are diverse. The story of our nation commences with the story of First Peoples as the traditional owners of our land and the oldest continuous culture in the world. Here in Victoria, we are committed to addressing past and ongoing injustices through treaty and the truth-telling work of the Uruk Justice Commission as we work towards a better future for all Victorians. 
I would also like to acknowledge the Honourable Linda Desso, Governor of Victoria, Tony Anthony Howard, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, as has been acknowledged by the Governor. And thank you, Governor, for having us here today at this flag raising ceremony at this magnificent Government House. And I also want to acknowledge the many frontline workers who are also with us today, who have worked on those recent flood efforts. And uh, we saw just back in October last year, the forceful destruction that those floods had at the time and that continue to be impacting on communities across the state. Whether it's communities from che Shepparton, Charlton, Rochester, Echuca, Seymour, in parts of my own community around Bendigo and beyond, we have seen an incredible relief response and willingness to support Victorians as they go on that long journey of recovery and rebuilding. In the immediate aftermath of those October floods, I was deeply impressed as I witnessed Victorians who cooked meals and delivered them for free, who filled sandbags, built levees, people from a diverse range of organisations and backgrounds who powered that emergency response where the waters could not be stopped. Crews of people working around the clock to fix damaged roads, rebuilt fences, rescued wildlife, cleaned up homes, businesses, schools, community facilities to the thousands and thousands of volunteers, emergency workers, ADF personnel, many too, it's worth noting, were impacted by those flood waters themselves. All of you working in active flood zones, relief centres and temporary villages. Also to all those Victorians who donated time, energy and money to help neighbours, communities or even at times complete strangers, to every single one of you, thank you for your work and remarkable effort. In our most difficult times, we see the best of the Australian spirit. When faced with challenges, we show that we are stronger together, and that as a community, we are resilient, brave, and compassionate. The unity of effort following those floods continues today, and I'll share just one small example. In Elmore, north of uh, Bendigo in Northern Victoria, a village has been established, a temporary home for individuals and families where their own homes and communities are going through that long journey of rebuilding. Alongside a range of different services supporting those families, including mental health support, things like school holiday programs for the young children there. At Christmas time, a Christmas lunch for 140 people was hosted by Emergency Recovery Victoria, providing just a brief respite and a touch of tradition for residents facing some really serious challenges in uncertain times. So on occasions like these and so many others, we see Victorians at their very best. We lend a hand and look after one another. And nowhere is that spirit of courage and compassion stronger than among our great emergency service workers and volunteers. Your dedication, acts of courage, kindness and sacrifice are a source of national pride for all of us. Not only for your work on those recent flood efforts I've mentioned this morning, but the work that you do every day to protect Victorians and to keep us safe. So on this Australia Day, we recognise the best of us. We recognise those efforts of people who do go above and beyond to make our state, our nation, a better place. Whatever your story is this Australia Day, it's an opportunity to reflect on what makes our nation so special. And we'll be see Victorians today having the opportunity right around the state, in country towns, in regional centres, in the suburbs and around the city, being part of local community events that will be based around respectful reflection, togetherness and inclusion. So as we reflect on our nation's past, we do celebrate the diverse and proudly multicultural society we have built, and we celebrate that spirit of compassion, courage and inclusion that binds us together. I would now like to invite you all to join with me in reading the Australian affirmation. As an Australian citizen, I affirm my loyalty to Australia and its people, whose democratic beliefs I share, whose rights and liberties I respect, and whose laws I uphold and obey. Thank you. Thank you, Acting Premier. If I could now ask you all to be upstanding for the playing of the Australian National Anthem, and we welcome you to join in.
to musician Lauren Stewart and the Australian Army Band. It is time now for the final salute to the Governor of Victoria prior to the departure of the official party. Please remain standing for the departure of the Governor, Mr Howard, and the official party. Thank you everyone for your attendance today and as you remain standing, please join me in thanking the Australian Defence Force Tri-Service Guard of Honour and the Australian Army Band. flag raising ceremony. I'd like to acknowledge Australia Day Victoria 2023 presenting partners, the National Australia Day Council assisted by the Australian Government and Australian Government Department of Defence.
encourage those of you here and viewing at home to reflect, respect, and celebrate Australia Day. We'll leave you now with the story of Australia. At its heart, the story of us encourages all Australians to listen, respect, and celebrate with other Australians, whoever they are, wherever they come from. The story of Australia begins over 60,000 years ago. We're all part of the story. Thank you, and good morning. The story of Australia is the story of me. That concludes it's the, the story of morning. you. There are many it's the story of we. And events around the city to enjoy. In part, it is painful. In part, it is raw. In others, it's beautiful. Inspiring, radial. It tells of many people. From far and away. And those who've been here, since the beginning of time. It brings us together. And tears us apart. We all have our views. So where do we start? By listening to each other. And, and sharing our part. We're all part of the story. Australia Day.